Immediately before St. Mark's account of Peter's confession of faith, which we just heard, he records what has to be the strangest miracle in the life and ministry of Jesus. It occurs in the town of Bethsaida, and it involves a blind man. The Lord Jesus takes the blind man by the hand, away from the village, away from the crowds, and then spits and puts the saliva on the man's eyes. He lays hands on him. And then, miraculously, the man's eyes are opened. He sees, but not exactly clearly. Jesus asks this formerly blind man, what do you see? And he gives an enigmatic answer. He says, I see people, but they are like trees walking. Jesus then lays hands once again on this man with now blurry vision, and the man is able to see clearly. This strange, two-staged miracle is the key to understanding what happens today with St. Peter at Caesarea Philippi. Peter, like the blind man, comes to a new vision, but it doesn't come all at once. Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, has his eyes opened to the supernatural reality of who Jesus is. He recognizes, he sees that Jesus is the Christ. Yet, the details are a little blurry. And when the Lord Jesus tells the apostles that the Christ will have to suffer and die and be rejected, Peter disagrees. The Lord Jesus' vision does not agree with his newfound vision, and he has the audacity to rebuke the Lord. Jesus then has to correct Peter's new vision. He has to show Peter that the Christ will win his victory by dying on the cross. This two-staged opening of Peter's eyes, the opening of a blind man's eyes, is an icon for us of how the Lord works, indeed, in our own lives. We would certainly prefer to see everything we need to see all at once, but God rarely works that way. He opens our eyes by stages. He doesn't show everything and all at once, but little by little, through different lessons and different circumstances, he reveals who he is. He reveals the fullness of his love and life to us. This is a great gift. It can be frustrating, though, not to be as far as we'd like. And it can be even more frustrating when we see others seemingly still blind, only half seeing. Yet, this is how God works. It's slow, it's by stages, but it's sure and true. The way we grow in our vision is what Jesus has to say at the end of this gospel. It is only by the cross that our vision is corrected. A spiritual writer once wrote that God does not instruct us so much with new ideas but rather 
He teaches us through trials, contradictions, and pains and sufferings in our lives. In other words, he teaches by our sharing in his cross. Those crosses, those trials, either break us or they break us open. And when we are broken open, we are filled with a new light to see more deeply and more clearly. Through the cross and its light, we go from merely recognizing Jesus as the Savior to our Savior. We go from recognizing Jesus as the Anointed One to the Anointed One who anoints us with the unction, the power of the Holy Spirit. It turns out, brothers and sisters, that that strange vision that the newly seeing man from Bethsaida enjoyed when he first opened his eyes was on to something. He saw people who looked like trees walking. And it turns out that those who truly live are those walking trees. Those who truly live bear the cross with patience on their backs, with the beams like branches following Jesus. It's the church, a forest of walking trees following the Lord carrying his cross that comes to see him clearly, to see the one who blazes the path forward, giving us life, and light a little more each day, if only we follow him on his path.